Good morning. I said good morning. We have a couple of questions to ask this morning. People might be asking this question. Why do we march? The why do we march, I'm going to let my brother Michael Blake answer that question because I think he's got that. Everyone here knows why we're marching. We're marching for justice. But I want to ask another question. Who are we marching for? And what I want to posit to you is that we are marching for those who can't march. And we're not saying those that have a job or, a, or, a, uh, or are sick today or have a doctor's appointment or are going to school. We're marching for Eric Garner. We're marching for Trayvon Martin. That's why we're not saying we march for justice. We march to justice. We are marching to justice. We are marching till we get justice. And justice will happen every single day. And it won't stop until we get it. We march to justice. So first, on behalf of the Black, Puerto Rican, Asian, Hispanic Task Force and Caucus, this is for, where's Carmen? Sister Carmen Perez. If we can borrow you, Tamika, Mallory, and Linda. If we can get you three for one second, Senator Rivera, if you can. We, we, we want you to know, come on up, come on up. We, we, we want them to know that those of us that have been given the honor to serve an elective office, no, come on up. Might not be enough. Might not be enough. I, I, come on. I'm Jamaican, but I'm slim. Come on, get on up here. Get up here. That'll break if I get up. We want them to know that those of us that begin to honor an elected service, that we walk with you. We believe in you. Every time we reflect on our history, Brothers, we did our part, but it was the women who had all the leadership that made it happen. Dr. King spoke of I Have a Dream, but it was Dr. Dorothy Irene, Irene Height who said I got to give the full speech. When we talk about, whether it be Mary McLeod Bethune, when we talk about those that were the sheroes, these are the sheroes that are saying we're going to march to justice. So, on this day when people from across the state, individuals across and out of our state gather in New York City and march for 250 miles from New York to DC, along the way to say that we are growing this movement for police reform and accountability. Whereas we're the task force of great juvenile criminal justice experts, advocates, following the leadership of Harry Belafonte and led by Executive Director Carmen Perez where Justice League have been coordinating efforts in and around New York City in the recent Eric Garner grand jury decision where Justice League has been focusing for two areas, direct and peaceful action and immediate implementation of their list of demands. And let's be clear, we're not stopping until we get these demands implemented. Where the Justice League is marching in solidarity with elders and youth, incarcerated men and women, and the families of communities that have been impacted by police brutality, they march on behalf of Eric Garner and Gurley and Jesse Hernandez and Rakia Boyd and Tamir Rice and Michael Brown and Renisha McBride and London Colvin and John Craw Crawford III and Miriam Carey and Anthony Baez and Riley Graham and the countless but not forgotten others who have lost their lives. We march for them for this justice package. We stand with you as the black Puerto Rican Asian Hispanic Task Force to say we march to justice with you. This is to say we are marching to justice together. We are not going to stop till we get justice. This is for all those that died. We will not let their lives end in vain. We will stand with you every single day. Hey, no justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! God bless you, everybody. That's why we're not saying we march for justice. We march to justice. We are marching to justice. We are marching till we get justice, and justice will happen every single day, and it won't stop until we get it. We march to justice. So first, on behalf of the Black, Puerto Rican, Asian, Hispanic Task Force and Caucus, this is for, where's Carmen? Sister Carmen Perez. If we can borrow you, Tamika, Mallory, and Linda. If we can get you three for one second, Senator Rivera, if you can. We, we, we want you to know, come on up, come on up. We, we, we want them to know that those of us that have been given the honor to serve an elective office, no, come on up. Might not be enough. I, I, come on. I'm Jamaican, but I'm slim. Come on, get on up here. Get up here. That'll break if I get up. We want them to know that those of us that begin to honor an elected service, that we walk with you. We believe in you. 
Every time we reflect on our history, Brothers, we did our part, but it was the women who had all the leadership that made it happen. Dr. King spoke of I Have a Dream, but it was Dr. Dorothy Irene, Irene Height who said I got to give the full speech. When we talk about, whether it be Mary McLeod Bethune, when we talk about those that were the sheroes, these are the sheroes that are saying we're going to march to justice. So, on this day when people from across the state, individuals across and out of our state gather in New York City and march for 250 miles from New York to DC, along the way to say that we are growing this movement for police reform and accountability. Whereas we're the task force of great juvenile criminal justice experts, advocates, following the leadership of Harry Belafonte and led by Executive Director Carmen Perez where Justice League has been coordinating efforts in and around New York City in the recent Eric Garner grand jury decision where Justice League has been focusing for two areas, direct and peaceful action and immediate implementation of their list of demands. And let's be clear, we're not stopping until we get these demands implemented. Where the Justice League is marching in solidarity with elders and youth, incarcerated men and women, and the families of communities that have been impacted by police brutality, they march on behalf of Eric Garner and Gurley and Jesse Hernandez and Rakia Boyd and Tamir Rice and Michael Brown and Renisha McBride and London Coleman and John Craw Crawford III and Miriam Carey and Anthony Baez and Ramily Graham and the countless but not forgotten others who have lost their lives. We march for them for this justice package. We stand with you as the black, Puerto Rican, Asian, Hispanic task force to say we march to justice with you. This is to say we are marching to justice together. We are not going to stop till we get justice. This is for all those that died. We will not let their lives end in vain. We will stand with you every single day. Hey, no justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! God bless you, everybody. Thank you, Linda. It's not easy to follow Debbie Rose either. But I'm so honored and proud to be here because we have been outraged over and over and over again and have not seen the lasting changes that are absolutely necessary to keep people safe, to keep people alive. And in these last few months, we've seen somewhat of a growing chorus of Blue Lives Matter, of All Lives Matter, Let's remind everybody why the term Black Lives Matter came up in the first place. Because it's, it's always unarmed black men who are being gunned down for no reason. Every 28 hours. Every 28 hours. This is what we need to change. We want to keep everybody safe. We want to keep everybody alive. And so I'm just so proud of these young people who are taking it upon themselves to march to justice, to ensure that the halls of power hear our collective voice and demand for change here in New York as well as across this nation. And my only regret is that I can't march with you because I'm a teacher now. <laughs> so I've got to get to class. If you had only scheduled this one month later, I would have gladly taken off nine, ten days to march to Washington. But I can't miss my, I can't let my students down. So I will be with you in spirit. I want to thank what Councilmember King dubbed the Supremes, Carmen, Linda, Tamika. They have done an incredible job. Yes. I want to thank George Gresham and 1199. 1199 is in the house. Yeah. And our elected officials have been entirely eloquent. Let's keep up the fight until we get the changes we need so that we can keep everybody safe, so we can keep everybody alive. Thank you. All right. John brought up something really important, he brought up education. And one thing about the Justice League is that we understand that all these issues are interconnected. 
that our kids' opportunities are being taken away from them, and that we're fighting against big top dollars trying to take over our school systems. So next up, I want to introduce you a very important woman, one who's fighting every single day for our children in the New York City public school system. Please help me welcome Zakia Ansari, Advocacy Director for the Alliance for Quality Education. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am so humbled and I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. Like my heart is pounding um, for a num num number of reasons. One is that this is such an important moment in time. And two years ago, in my own head, there was something that said that you know women were going to shine soon. And I didn't know what that would look like. But when I saw Assembly Member get, uh, Member Blake give these three amazing women, Tamika, uh, Carmen, and Linda, their proclamation, it was like it came full circle for me. Now, while I would love to go on this march today, absolutely love to go on this march today, I can't because I thought the New York State budget would be done. But there's still three more months of struggle um, to stop the privatization of our public schools. And so therefore, I have to stand in, in, in with others to stand strong and fight against that. But what I want to say is that um, someone gave me this book for my, my birthday last month. Um, and I was reading it, and it was showing me, I was tweeting about it today, and in 1950, Ella Baker was leading letter protests and protests in the street. Guess what about police brutality? Guess what about ensuring that every child in New York City had access to a high quality education? And 60 plus years later, we're still fighting that same fight. So I believe change is going to come. I absolutely believe that. Um, I'm so excited, I'm humbled to be standing here today, but the fight continues not only as they do their march, the fight continues here in New York City, the fight continues here in New York State, the fight continues across this country, because every time we turn around, there's a privatization of our public schools. Guess what, public education is too big and too important to fail. Just like uh, justice is too big and too important to fail. So I stand here today united as a mother of eight and a grandmother of three, but united and proud to know all these amazing women women and men that are going to be taking this journey for us, for my children, for my grandchildren, and the children that are yet to be here. So I want everybody to raise their fist up high as a sign of power, that we send them on their journey, that we elude and exude this amazing energy that carries them safely through where they have to go, but gives them the energy when their feet are hurting, when their backs are tired from carrying them backpacks, when their voices are hoarse from talking and singing, to continue to fight in the struggle. Because without struggle, there is no oh, progress. Absolutely. So let's march to what? Justice. March to what? Justice. March to what? Justice. 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 on the other side of the Outer Bridge Crossing. That is now the home to my three hearts, my son and my two daughters. So today I know I march to justice because I need to know that my children and my husband and my nephews and my neighbors and my coworkers and everyone who is black or brown will know when they walk down the street they don't have to fear that they're going to be racially profiled, and instead of getting home, they're going to end up in a casket. That's why I marched to justice. I know that when we commemorated the 50 years of the march from Selma to Montgomery, it struck me deeply when I recognized that Congressman Lewis, who at the time was John Lewis, was 19 years old. He was part of the group that marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And yet today, what he would say and has said is, as much as we have to do, there is more yet to be done. And so it is our moment to pass the baton to the next generation of civil rights and social justice and economic justice leaders like the Justice League, like the Gathering of Justice, like each and every one of you who today are taking up that baton and you're gonna march to DC and I'm gonna march on with you as long as my legs carry me because I do it as an act of love, for my children, for my son, because it is time to end racial profiling. It is time to uplift our young people. It is about education instead of incarceration. Yes. And it is about making sure 
that our police officers, that we honor and respect those who respect us and who want to do their job, but those law enforcement officials who aren't doing their jobs and are violating our constitutional rights, they need to be held accountable. That's, right. That's why we march. Let's march together. Buenos dias, familia. Buenos dias. Mili talked about being born in the Bronx. I was born in the Dominican Republic, in the island of Dominican Republic and Haiti, La Española. And we march today to express the solidarity. I would like to share with you a quote from one of the greatest South African, uh, I'm sorry, African liberators. His name was Almilcar Cabral. Almilcar said once that solidarity is not an act of charity. Solidarity is an act of defense of mutual interest. And when we march with you, when we support the march to justice, we are also defending the rights of workers, not only here in New York, but across the United States. Right. Our government in Washington, presidents, American presidents, U.S. legislators are hypocrites. For years, they have preached to the whole world about the sanctity of human rights. But our human rights, our human rights get violated day in and day out. And we are telling with this march, we are delivering a message in Washington, D.C. We are telling Washington the whole world is watching. The whole world is watching. The whole world is watching. It is time to stop the injustices. It is time to respect and demand human rights for all lives right here in the United States because all lives matter. All lives matter. Thank Thank you.